dawn at the dusk of winter a giant green grey arm bent protectively around the Somerset levels the Mendip hills appear enclosed all of a piece hunched against the outside world but this rather forbidding impression is misleading from where the food forest grows on their northern slopes. Rob travels further in time than the mere 20 minutes of twists and turns to where the strawberries grow fat and juicy on the sunny side. Up their flanks where combs are carved deep, wooded valleys where deer buzzards and songbirds thrive. Across the bare sheep and cattle strewn uplands, past prehistoric burial mounds, along a Roman road, over the ancient water-addled limestone honeycomb of caves and underground rivers. before plunging down through deep gorges to the southern face of these haunting and magical hills. On a hill, in a wood, where nobody goes, up a track, through a gate, the food forest grows, with secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure, and Rob's discover, Rob's discovery. Somewhere in the maze of windswept lanes and hedges, near the miniature city of Wells, where the water emerges from the ancient aquifers, two men work. With bill hooks as sharp as their wit, they perform their winter craft, racing the sap before it rises in the spring. Chopping, dragging, hammering, bending, sawing and sweating, restoring. What we've done here, Rob, is um, the hedge got very gappy at the bottom, and a farmer, there was sort of, it had been flailed for years, and the farmer had the Mid Somerset Agricultural Society hedge laying competition here two weeks ago. So we're coming and filling in all the bits that weren't laid, and it had been flailed, and been flailed probably for 20 years, and gaps develop at the bottom. And by hedge lane, we're regenerating the hedge, so it will grow from where we've cut it at the bottom when we lay it over. But also dormant buds along, they will grow and it will thicken the hedge up and it just re regenerates the hedge. And it's a restoration really, um, an old ancient skill, and it re rejuvenates the hedge. Hedge laying is a complex, skilled practice of encouraging horizontal growth and weaving this growth into an impenetrable barrier to contain livestock. Used in this way, the thorn tree, for example, is an earlier natural version of barbed wire, and it is still found extensively throughout the English countryside. The strength and durability of these hedgerows is nothing short of amazing. If the farmer flails it again, which is great, 
it's, it used to take years to hit by hand and that's why hedges grew because farmers couldn't keep on top of it. Um, and he can allow the height to come up and the width to come so it's a nice A shape and it should be good for another 20-30 years probably. Um, if it grows up again it will turn into a line of trees and you'll get gaps in the bottom and it's just not such good habitat for birds and nesting and other animals that get in there and door mice. And so it's great for habitat, great for wildlife, keeps it nice and thick, good barrier, good wildlife corridor. Um, it should be fine for another, at least 20 years. Hedgerows were a refuge to more than 600 species of plant, 1,500 types of insects, 20 mammals and 65 species of birds, many of them declining farmland species with few other places to shelter or nest. Well, this hedge is suckered out quite wide. So the first thing we do is sort of cut out the sides so we can actually get into the hedge. Sometimes it can, you know, black form can come out maybe 15 feet from the hedge. So we've got to find the hedge and we've got to cut the wire out, get in there, cut the wire, take the posts out. Starting at the highest point, they work backwards, moving downhill. This is the North Somerset style, this is our style, so it's one we try and always do here. They work to keep the hedge about three and a half feet high and about two feet wide. With alternating stakes either side, separated by about three feet. There are about 14 regional styles throughout the country, each visually distinctive and each with its unique characteristic uses. If we go down to Devon Hedge Laying or the Devon Hedge Layers, the, the banks can be 10 feet high, so the hedges are laid dead flat. They don't use stakes, they'll use crooks and they'll peg them down really tight, flat on top of the bank. If you go and look at the Midland style, it's got binding on the top, it looks really nice. It's like three hazel rods tightly bind, a single line of stakes down the middle. Everything will be cut flush one side, which traditionally was the arable side, and the other side would all the growth would be left there, and that was the livestock side to keep the livestock away from the hedge. So there's probably 12, 14 regional styles in the country. We all think that's the best. Well, we use a bill hook, um, an axe, and if we're in a competition, that's what we use mainly. And we'll do it on our own. It's just one person, and you get 10 yards or 10 meters to do in five hours. When we work commercially, usually one person, the way we work, one person's cutting, um, who's Matt today, who's working with me, and I'll make the hedge, I'll actually build the hedge. So I'll drive the stakes in, get the angle right. Um, but we do use chainsaws, sometimes the trees can be six inches across or even bigger, so it takes two people to lower them in. When laying a tree of this size, ensuring the trunk does not split requires great skill with an axe. A clean, non-raggedy cut significantly lowers the risk of the tree becoming infected. You cut through the base of the larger growths to within an inch of the bark before pulling them down and binding them together, as near to horizontal as you can. But you must know which growths to cut away entirely, which will be strong enough to form the central structure, which will encourage the hedge to grow inwards into its own mysterious darkness instead of outwards towards the light. Well, this it's a mixed native hedge, so there's a uh, hawthorn in here, there's blackthorn in here, there's wild roses, there's hazel, um, there's a bit of dogwood, there's a bit of field maple, 
generally the rule is that the older the hedge, the more species you get in there. So if it's a newly planted hedge, which might be an enclosure planted hedge, could be 200 years old, they tend to be all hopeful. It takes a while for other species to come in. But these old hedges here, particularly up on the Mendips, you'll see a lot of varieties in there. As a rule of thumb, known after its inventor as Hooper's rule, we should count one century for every species that a hedge contains, ignoring the brambles and climbers that come in from outside. A properly mapped hedge, armoured with thorns and rooted over centuries, will withstand any number of panicking cows. Moreover, while a dead fence is always getting weaker, a living fence strengthens from year to year. Traditionally, the classes which were run on a Wednesday, they were attended by farmers' sons. It was market day, the farmers' sons would come along, learned a hedge lay, and then they'd use that on the farm. It's changed a little bit now. You've got people buying smaller pockets of land. They want to learn to hedge lay to be able to do it on their own fields. But also, there are grants available for hedge laying, so you have commercial hedge layers. So maybe you'll get people that work on the land, maybe tree surgeons or people that do fencing. They want to learn a bit of hedge laying because they think it's going to be useful. If you, if you want to try it yourself, get some advice from a local hedge layer or a hedge laying society. Do a short training course find out the basics and then practice, practice, practice and then you can enter a local competition. With an estimated 10,000 miles of hedgerows being lost in the UK every year, this is the main reason they continue to be laid.